It's springtime. You're outside more. It is time for sunscreen. But stay away from the chemical sunscreens with ingredients that can irritate skin, cause hormonal disruption or worse. Instead, use mineral sunscreen by Ginger Armor, which is just as effective. You'll get 15 percent off with code Pacman at gingerarmor.com. The link is down below. We start today not with a profile in courage, but with a profile in cowardice. And the guy's name is Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis has come up with the most squirrely. I mean, we're talking nuttier than squirrel poop. Excuse the metaphor. Uh, the squirreliest way to avoid answering a very simple question. Did failed twice indicted, twice impeached former President Donald Trump violate the peaceful transfer of power which was almost, I guess we could say they tried to stop on January 6, 2021. And Ron DeSantis comes up with an answer that is it's so stupid, it's almost laughable. And something very strange is going on with my hair, as you can see. And I, I really do apologize to the audience for that continued issues. Um, he says, I wasn't in Washington, D.C. on January 6, so I, I don't really know what happened. Oh, did, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll get back to that. We'll take a listen to this. Do you believe that Trump violated the peaceful transfer of power, a key principle that of American democracy that we must uphold? Are you in high school? Uh, yeah. Where do you go to school? You go around here? Uh, Vermont. I live in New Hampshire. Oh, OK. So you're yeah. from Vermont. Well, thank you for the question. So here's what I know. If this election is about Biden's failures and our vision for the future, we are going to win. If it's about relitigating things that happened two, three years ago, <laughs> we're going to lose. And so, I by the way, all Ron DeSantis is doing is relitigating COVID and talking about how he was so much better than Trump on COVID. So even, even so, he's already lying. But then we're getting to the real whopper. I can tell you this. Tell us why. The sanctimonious. I can tell you this. I can point you to. Tallahassee, Florida, on, I believe, January 5th, 2023. Uh, we had a transition of power from my first administration <laughs> to my second because I noticed that this is completely unrelated to the question. Won re election in a historic fashion. And at the end of the day, you know, we need to win and we need to get this done. So uh, I wasn't anywhere near Washington that day. I have nothing to do with what happened that day. Obviously, I didn't enjoy seeing, you know, what would happen. But we've got to go forward. On <laughs> Remember, the question wasn't were you in D.C. or did you have anything to do with it? The question was, will you actually denounce what Donald Trump did? It's a cowardly cop out to say I didn't enjoy seeing what happened. Well, Ron didn't enjoy it and I didn't enjoy it. But I'm willing to say Trump was at least partially responsible for what took place by inciting his followers. Ron DeSantis isn't willing to say that this is the I, I hate to use the term, the Trump term. This is a low energy, cowardly way to run a campaign. If you're actually going to make the case that you're the better choice than Trump on all fronts, you're going to say, I never would have said the things Trump said because any sensible person would realize how some of his followers would take it. And I wouldn't want that responsibility on my shoulders. I will govern in a different way. I would never do such a thing. And by the way, I'm also better on policy. But instead, DeSantis knows he sees the numbers. This is all a numbers game. In order to have a shot at winning the primary, DeSantis knows he either needs to dramatically increase Republican primary turnout, which it just doesn't seem like it's going to happen, or he needs to take some of Trump's current support because Trump's already polling 52 percent. And DeSantis is calculating, I can't take Trump's support from his hardcore supporters by saying he was responsible for the riots. I can't do it. They're, they're, it's not going to work. So instead, DeSantis is taking the cowardly way out, saying he didn't like what happened and uh, that people should vote for him. And if Trump gets indicted a third or fourth time and it becomes so chaotic that he can't even run, DeSantis will just be there for some MAGA people to support him. I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to work at all. By the way, here's one other clip from this event. While at the same campaign event in New Hampshire, 
DeSantis says what Trump did wrong wasn't to say lock up Hillary. It was to stop saying that. I remember these rallies in 2016. It was exciting. Yeah. Drain the swamp. I also remember lock her up, lock her up. Right. And then two weeks after the election, oh, don't forget about it. Forget I ever said that. No, no, no. One thing you'll get from me, if I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm not just saying that for an election. Right. And there are promises I could make that may help me marginally politically that I don't know that I could that I could necessarily follow through on. So I will not make that. Ron DeSantis is saying the problem with Trump wasn't that he said lock up Hillary. Remember, no evidence of crimes, no indictment, no conviction. But they, oh, we're for law and order. But you have no reason to lock up Hillary. DeSantis says the problem wasn't that Trump said lock her up. The problem was that he stopped saying it and that he didn't do it. This guy is as dangerous as Trump. He's exposing it every single day. Also in New Hampshire was not only Ron DeSantis, but it was also Donald Trump in New Hampshire. Trump gave a speech, which we will look at. But I don't remember if this was before or after the speech. Donald Trump was confronted about the leaked crime tape. Now, I don't even know that we should call it a leaked audio tape. It's a leaked crime tape in which Trump confirms. Yeah, he knew the documents were classified. He knew he didn't declassify them. He knew he was no longer the president and he still showed them to people. It is evidence of Trump's crimes and it is not vaguely of Trump's crimes he might be charged with. It's evidence of Trump's crimes that he has already been charged with and, and indicted for. Trump is asked about the leaked audio tape and he says, <laughs> honestly, I don't even know how to explain what he says. He just basically malfunctions here and says, I did nothing wrong. We did absolutely nothing wrong. This is just another hoax. It's called, uh, I would say, election interference more than anything else. It's a disgrace that they can do it. Next question. But everything was fine. We did nothing wrong and everybody knows it. Here's a sample of that newly released audio from two years ago. I was just saying, because we were talking about it, <laughs> and he, he said he wanted to attack Iran and what? And he said you it's pretty, well, pretty This was done by the military, given to me. Uh, I think we can probably, right? Yet last week with our colleague Brett Baer, the former president insisted that document did not exist. There was no document. That was a massive amount of papers and everything else talking about Iran and other things. And it may have been held up or may not, but that was not a document. I didn't have a document per se. OK, he wasn't a document per se. So listen, that's Fox News. First of all, notable that even Fox News now, they, they realize that it is an incoherent string of lies that conflict with each other. He says to Brett Bayer, there were no documents in the recording. He says, here's documents. Then he says, it was fine to show the documents, but because I could declassify them. But in the recording, he says they clearly weren't. Uh, you know, it's 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 all a mess. And Trump's brain seems to be functioning so poorly that he's lost an understanding of what words even mean at this point. What does hoax mean at this point? What what does it mean that it is a hoax? There is a an, an audio recording. Is he saying it's doctored? Is he saying the words he uses in the video no longer have meaning? And of course, if you just sit back and think about all of the conflicting things that have been said, you start to wonder, listen, don't you understand, guys? The tape is a hoax. He had the documents, but he had the right to because he declassified them, except he says on the recording he didn't declassify them. But the documents were planted and it's not a crime anyway. And also there were no documents. Why won't you just accept that? Why is it you will just insist on going after this guy, the biggest victim in the world, the most honest man in political history? Why won't you accept the seven different conflicting explanations about what he did, what he had and what he said? And if you think that this moment when he was interviewed before or after the speech was bad, you have to see the actual speech that he gave. Donald Trump spiraling, rambling incoherently in New Hampshire yesterday in front of a mostly dead silent crowd. There were like three or four moments in the entire rambling speech where the crowd seemed to come to life, rattled to life by either transphobic or otherwise horrifying comments from Trump, otherwise sitting there like statues. I when I went to the Louvre in Paris, the statues showed more signs of life 
than this crowd in New Hampshire yesterday for Donald Trump. Here, Trump tries to shift the attention away from his own crimes and attacks Joe Biden, who is Catholic, of wanting to go after Catholics. Think about that. Of all the things you could make up about Joe Biden, Joe Biden is unique in terms of presidential history in that he's one of the very few presidents that is Catholic. John F. Kennedy was Catholic. It might just be uh, Biden and and, uh, JFK who have been our Catholic presidents. But uh, Trump says, oh, he's going to go after Catholics. What? What evidence do you have of that? The Marxist prosecutors who release rapists and murderers while persecuting conservatives. And by the way, I understand that the audio is a disaster. It must have been Antifa running audio, but that's that's an issue. That's not our issue. That's the uh, that's the tape here. People of religion, Catholics. How about Catholics? How would a Catholic ever vote for Joe Biden when there's actually an assault on Catholics? I mean, I don't know how many Catholics are. How, who's a Catholic in this room? How would any? It is New Hampshire, so there was that one guy who clapped. Everybody as a Catholic, because specifically Catholics are targeted by the FBI and the DOJ. And then you're supposed to vote for Joe Biden. It doesn't make sense. I will direct a completely overhauled DOJ to investigate every radical district attorney and an AG and a DA, okay? Attorney generals all over the country. It's attorneys general, sir. They're attorneys. They're not generals. They're crooked as hell. A lot of them are really bad. All right. So anyway, there's no evidence that Joe Biden is going after Catholics. It's idiotic. Joe Biden, aside from the fact that Joe Biden is Catholic. Now, you could be Catholic and go after Catholics. Aside from that, Joe Biden also isn't doing it. Trump then re- uh, rehashing his uh, rants about uh, appliances, staying away from the third element of the bathroom here. Sometimes Trump becomes fixated on toilets. He didn't in this clip, but he is very much obsessed with washing machines and dryers. Oh, they want to take away your your gas stoves. Does anybody like gas better? You cook a lot more than I do. I just switched to induction. I have to tell you, it is phenomenal. I did salute my gas stove as they took it away, though, and I, I was crying. Because I have a lot of friends that are really into the cooking thing, and they say yeah. gas is better. So. But they want to take it away. They want to take away your washing machines and your dryers. They don't want to give you any water for the washing machine, even though you have so much water. You don't know what the hell to do with it up here. It flows out into the ocean. They want to take away your. Yeah, you can have my induction cooktop when you pry it from my cold, dead hands, Joe Biden. By the way, in all honesty, induction is really fantastic. I couldn't recommend it more. Trump again is trying to wrap the audience into being shared victims with his indictment. He's come up with this line. He's using it in those grifty fundraising emails. He's using it in interviews. He says when they indicted me, they really indicted you, which is, of course, not true. They indicted him. Democrats, Marxists, communists and fascists indict me. I consider it a badge, a great, great, beautiful badge of honor and courage. Remember that there is no evidence of Marxist prosecutors right now. Because I'm being indicted for you, Democrats, (laughs) Marxists, communists. Uh. This has just gotten so dumb where, you know, maybe the reason the crowd is dead is they've heard this stuff a million times. I once went to a great I've told the story before. I went to a Billy Joel concert and Billy Joel came out and said, I don't have any new stuff to play for you. And the crowd went absolutely wild because everybody wants to hear the hits with Trump. He's been giving the same speech for three and a half years at this point. No, we've all heard it a million times. We know the trans swimmer. You don't like the trans swimmer. And you showed Abdul a picture of your house. We've heard it a million times. Here's Trump talking about Ron DeSantis. We have clips of Ron where he had a closed state. We will close our state. We will. He was closed. Now he says, oh, we were so open. He wasn't open. There were some governors like Henry McMaster, because I didn't make anybody close. It was a federalist program. The Democrats all closed. Some governors closed. Some governors closed for a short time. Georgia was closed a little bit for a short time. They did a very good job. Um, it was a little bit closed. It's sort of like you, you're a little bit pregnant. Is this, the state is somewhat closed. Oh, really? Wow, that's interesting. South. If you look at South Dakota, Christy open. did a very good job. She Wide was open. open. She kept it open. And some others, they did a very good job. Uh, but Ron was actually strongly closed. Remember, he closed the beaches, closed the highways. He didn't want anybody on those highways. Remember, those highways were closed. We want everybody locked in. 
he would make very threatening speeches, you know, because he's a tough guy. And uh, but then all of a sudden he's campaign. I didn't close. I didn't close. And the, the media, yeah. the fake. I have to tell you, I, I have I found no evidence that Ron DeSantis closed the highways. I'm not aware of any any state that closed highways. I may be wrong and I will correct it at the start of the show tomorrow. But closed highways not making sense. Trump claims that CNN's failed former CEO Chris Licht was fired because they had a Trump town hall that got great ratings, which is very stupid. Why would you do? Why would you fire a guy for great ratings with The Apprentice. What do you think? How important? In other words, how important was The Apprentice? Yeah. No. Okay. It's very. She said she's never seen it. That's like. I don't know. I think I'm not insulted by that. She said. All right. Well, it's uh, just a little rumor that goes around. They blamed this guy, Jeff Zucker, who got fired at CNN. Zucker. I got him his job and then he got fired, but it took too long to fire him. How about CNN? We did the CNN town hall. Did anybody see it? So it was a ratings bonanza for them. I did it because I was going into enemy territory, but they get <laughs> lousy ratings. And so I'm sure oh, there goes their camera. Just their camera just went off. Who cares? Their camera just went off. <laughs> it didn't. The little red light. And all of a sudden, what happened to that red light? But you know what? So CNN, they get so I walk in and they, they I could see the level of hostility was incredible. But think of it. They fired the head of CNN and he had the highest rated show in 11 years. It is not true that Trump's town hall was the highest rated show in 11 years. They fired him because the entire CNN apparatus has had like 40, 50 percent reduced ratings, which is a nightmare. And then lastly, Trump capping off this completely unhinged speech by saying, how can they arrest me if I'm a candidate? Candidates can't get arrested, apparently. But they are fighting me. They, tr- they even tried to have me arrested. I'm a candidate. I said, wait a minute, I'm a candidate. You're arresting a candidate. Yeah, yeah. because you're leading. That's why we're arresting. Well, it's because you uh, appear, appear to have committed crimes. And so this is another story. When Trump gets arrested, it's an arrest of all of his followers metaphorically. And the reason they arrested him was because he's leading the Republican primary, which, of course, makes no sense because DeSantis does better against Joe Biden in general election polling. Why would you try to hurt the campaign? of the guy that you are more likely to be able to defeat in November of 2024. It doesn't make any sense, my friends, folks. After the break, I am going to play for you maybe one of the most insane clips of the year. Okay, so stay with us. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. It's free. It's free. Listen, Howard Stern said yesterday he doesn't subscribe even though he watches. Okay, so when I say that there's three million people around watching and not subscribing, Howard Stern is one of those people. Okay, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to two million. Let's do it. Quick break and right back. It is springtime. It's getting warm. We are all spending more time outside. Many sunscreens contain elements that the FDA has warned about. Oxybenzone, avabenzone, homosalate and others. These are uh, absorbed into your bloodstream. They can irritate sensitive skin. They can be hormone disruptors. I just stay away from them and I use mineral sunscreens. I do the same when I put sunscreen on my baby daughter and our sponsor Ginger Armor makes the world's thinnest 100 percent mineral sunscreen. It works for all skin types, not just gingers, as the name might suggest. It rubs in clear on all skin tones, feels like nothing is on with SPF 50 plus protection. Ginger Armor also acts as a plant based moisturizer with 21 simple, gentle ingredients from plants and minerals. It's good for you. It's good for the planet. It's more affordable than other sunscreens with similar quality ingredients. I also love that it's a small business made in the US and they donate 1% of all sales to the 1% for the planet charity. Go to gingerarmor.com, use code PACMAN for 15% off. The link is down below. All right, this one I hope you're sitting down for, or, or at least braced or attached to something, because this is like nothing I have ever seen. Just when it seems as though there is nowhere else to go, there is no place to hide for Donald Trump now that this audio tape has come out where Trump has clearly heard shuffling papers and saying these are secret documents, these are classified documents. I can't show you this stuff. I shouldn't be showing you this stuff. 
Trump was interviewed yesterday after his speech in New Hampshire by the publication Semaphore. And Trump's new claim is he wasn't actually holding up any documents. It was just like golf related documents. <laughs> golf. Uh, he's you can hear him shuffling papers. He's saying these are secret documents, but there weren't actually any documents. He was just playing it up. Look at this article. This is by Shelby Talcott for Semaphore. It was bravado. Trump says he wasn't holding up classified documents in the 2021 meeting referred to on the tape. Look at these quotes. I would say it was bravado. If you want to know the truth, it was bravado. Trump said in an interview aboard his plane with Semaphore and ABC News. I was talking and just holding up papers and talking about them, but I had no documents. I didn't have any documents. Um, the late the latest comments suggested a new potential legal argument from Trump that he was overselling the material he was showing to an aide and people working on a biography of Mark Meadows in a recording. Quote, I just held up a whole pile of my desk is loaded up with papers. I have papers from 25 different things, he said, adding he kept relevant news articles about topics like Iran on hand. At one point, Trump gestured to the seat next to him on the plane where a stack of various papers, newspapers, copies of his speech, printouts of articles sat. He grabbed some from the pile and placed them in front of him, moving the round, moving them around as he spoke and offering up a physical reenactment of what he said was occurring on the audio tape. Did I use the word plans? What I'm referring to is magazines, newspapers, plans of buildings. I had plans of buildings, you know, building plans. I had plans for a golf course. Asked if he had any regrets about his handling of classified documents. Trump said, no, no, I have no regrets. I didn't have a classified doc document. There was no classified document on my desk. Wow. Um, this is like nothing I've ever seen or heard of the, Here's the new position. Yes, Trump does refer to documents on the audio recording. Yes, you hear papers shuffling around. Yes, there were papers on Trump's desk. And yes, Trump uses the word plans. But these were not classified plans to attack Iran. These were golf course plans. <laughs> For, for a golf course Trump planned to build. And he was just trying to impress the people around him. Now, of course, the problem is there are witnesses who have testified that these really were documents related to military plans and defense information. That's a little bit of a problem. It may be a problem if Trump tries to use this argument in court. Um, and of course, the other problem is that this is explanation number seven or eight for the exact same thing. There were classified documents, but they were declassified. Oh, there were classified documents, but I had the right to have them and they are de facto declassified just by virtue of me having them. Oh, there were no documents at all. There were papers, but they weren't classified documents. There were classified documents, but I didn't take them. The FBI planted them or there might have been some documents in boxes along with clothes and mementos, as these people call them. I don't know why they say mementos instead of the word mementos. They just make up words. I don't know. Uh, but it, it's, it's just completely crazy. Now, I want to add one other commentary here, and I think that this is a, an important thing to mention. There are some people on the revolutionary left. I, I know that some people call them tankies. I'm trying to be as least pejorative as possible. The, the sort of like pro Putin left, the revolutionary left, the folks who like Maduro in Venezuela or Castro or these types of folks. There are some on the revolutionary left who are saying this is I'm not even going to name names. This is this entire leaked audio recording story is another example of the corporate media ignoring the good things about Trump. These plans to attack Iran. Trump didn't want to attack Iran. I got a few emails about this from revolutionary left to saying, David, why won't you be honest and tell the real story? The real story is the media hates Trump because when he was given that plan to attack Iran, he didn't want to do it. Now, there's a whole bunch of different things that could be said, including that presidents are presented with every option all the time. And the idea that someone was pushing him to attack Iran and he didn't want to do it, we don't even know that to be true. But you have to remember, Trump has no idea what he's for or against. He might be for or against attacking Iran today. He might have been for or against attacking Iran on the day that he was presented with those plans or on the day that he showed someone. The, 
it doesn't matter. Trump doesn't know anything about Iran. He doesn't know anything about foreign policy. It is irrelevant to whether Trump committed the crimes for which he's been arrested, whether on that day or on the day before or on the day after he wanted to attack Iran or not. And the revolutionary leftists who are saying there's no story here other than Trump really was against wars and he was against war with Iran. You are just flat out wrong. That is not the story here. The story here is they've got Trump dead to rights on an audio recording committing the exact crimes that he's been charged for. Now, what is his lawyer saying about it? Let's talk about that next. Alina Habba, one of Trump's so-called lawyers. Again, we never know like who's a TV lawyer, who's an actual lawyer representing Trump in court. It seems Alina Habba at one point was actually representing Trump in some legal capacity. She completely screwed up, appears to have lied. Horrible, just horrible. Now she seems to have shifted to being more of a TV lawyer. She went on Fox News and good for him. Lawrence Jones, I've been critical of Lawrence Jones on Fox News before. He actually confronts her with the question that on the one hand, Trump says that the documents were declassified. On the other hand, he told Brett Bayer the documents were classified, but that that's OK. Then he's saying there's no documents. What is the truth? And Trump's own lawyer, Alina Habba, says, I don't know. I don't know what the truth is. Tape says. It's so is it the stupid. position of the president that when he was having that conversation, the information that he was talking about mm -hmm. was already declassified? Or was it what he told Brett Baird that it was a news article there? Or is it either or? Or is it both? <laughs> I don't know. And here's what I do know. The clip they put out doesn't answer that question. All it says is President Trump said, hi, look. If I was president, I can declassify a classified document. And when you're not president, you can't. <laughs> Only the president. Can. He was simply in for with with absolutely no personal stake in it whatsoever. Trump was merely informing the people around him about how classification works. That's all. Why is everybody getting all worked up as if there's some problem here? Do that. What does that say? Well, it says exactly what dual system of justice we're living in. That's what I heard. That's what I saw. And I would. And, and by the way, all we know. Isn't that the best? And by the way, didn't she get the update from the semaphore article we just looked at where now Trump says there were no documents? That's the new line. There simply were no documents whatsoever. And of course, as you know, and we're putting the transcript up on the screen, Trump says the document is top secret on the recording. Trump says it's highly confidential and secret. This is secret information. So he knows that it is now the, the new argument they're saying is that is a lie. The transcript is of Trump lying that those are classified secret documents, which is just absolutely amazing. Uh, another clip from this interview with Trump's pseudo lawyer Alina Habba, um, again, just going in circles. Uh, she says in the indictment, they don't mention an Iran document. And then the question is, well, have they found the document? Trump may have destroyed that document. Trump's flushing documents, all these things. And she says, well, it doesn't even matter because it's a lie anyway that the document was there. If you're confused about what I'm telling you right now, it's because it's this confusing. Uh, and I would, and, and by the way, all we know is that in the indictment itself, there was no Iran documents named as part of it. Just want the American public to realize that that document that they claim he had was not part of the indictment, possibly because he didn't turn it over, possibly because it was destroyed. This is desperate times and desperate measures by people Have that they are losing. It? Have what, they the found docu it? what document are they talking? They're, th that's what they're saying it was, but that was not part of the indictment. It doesn't make sense because it, it's a lie. It's a ruse. <laughs> they are just trying to distract the American. People. Remember, Alina Habba lies all the time. The, if anybody here is almost certainly lying, it's her. That's the name of the game right now in America. It's sad. America needs a fair opportunity to see all facts and have a fair justice system. And that's what I know the president wants to bring back to this country. We haven't seen it since 2020 when he left, but hopefully we'll see it again in 2024 when he wins. Yeah, there you go. That's a very optimistic spin. Or maybe we'll see it during the trial. The trial is, of course, the opportunity to put out all of those facts and legal arguments. The problem is that the vast majority of the legal arguments they're telegraphing that they might use that this was not actually a criminal thing. It's a Presidential Records Act thing. Well, that's not the that's a misstatement of the law. And, and no serious judge would even allow that argument to be made to a jury. Well, he was just lying about having the documents. OK, well, that's really hard to believe at this point, given everything else that's been said. This is really an indicative situation of panic, panic at the end of the day. And if you're just listening today, we'll have all these clips we're playing on our Instagram, on our TikTok, and of course, on the YouTube channel. 
Don't forget that the best way to support the David Pakman show is by becoming a member, which gives you access to the daily bonus show, the regular show with no commercials. You also get access to our entire archive of every episode dating back a really long time and plenty of other awesome membership perks. Go to joinpacman.com. Joinpacman.com. The mayor of Miami, Francis Suarez, who is running for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination, currently polling 0.0, has made what could be a critical, critical error, which is when he was asked about the Uyghur people. This is the Muslim ethnic minority in China that is very much discriminated against that we've talked about before. He had no idea what it was and actually joked, what is it called? A weeble? And it is cringe. But the upshot of all of this is I don't think it'll really hurt his campaign in the sense that he's already polling zero. This was during an interview with Hugh Hewitt. Here is Francis Suarez making the argument that he has what it takes. So listen, if you're the mayor of Miami, ostensibly, you don't need to know much about the weaker people. You could say, well, he still should because there might be refugees in Miami. OK, all right. Let's, but it's a bit of a stretch. OK, you don't need to know about the weaker people to be a good administrator of the city of Miami. If you're making the case that you're ready to be president of the United States, you at least have to be aware of what Hugh Hewitt is talking about. If you're averse to cringe, you probably want to skip the following 12 seconds of audio and video. Will you be talking about the Uyghurs in your campaign? The what? The Uyghurs. What's a Uyghur? Okay, we'll come back to that. Uh <laughs> I love Hugh Hewitt going, we'll we'll come back to that later. Uh yeah, he might be someone might be able to pass him a note during the remainder of the interview. Dear God. And then uh here at the end of the interview, Suarez acting like he's gonna take it very seriously and look into it, but he said, What was it? Is that the Weebles? You gave me Hugh homework. You, I'll, I'll look at what uh, was it. Would you call it a weeble? The Uyghurs. <laughs> you really need to know about the Uyghurs, Mayor. You got to talk about it every day. I will, okay. I will, I will. I will talk about. I will forward, I will search Uyghurs. I'm. I'm a good learner. I'm a fast learner. Yeah. Um. This is really bad. And you know the truth is, uh, you know when I look at the list of people who are running. And by the way, as I as I told you, I have a new poll from Morning Consult. Suarez is polling zero, but it's like a super strong zero. It's probably close to one. <laughs> I mean, when I say he's polling zero point zero, it's probably more like zero point nine or something like that. Um, he's already polling zero. So what of these candidates who would have something substantive to say about the Uyghur people? Trump, probably not. DeSantis, maybe. Pence would know something about them. Ramaswamy, he could probably talk about the Uyghur people, but it would make no sense. Nikki Haley, I think, may, would be the person who could most coherently talk about the Uyghur people. Um, Chris Christie could. I don't know about Tim Scott. The point here is, I think Suarez may be alone and not even having heard of the Uyghur people. But most of these candidates would have very little that is substantive to actually say. Now, as a reminder, the Uyghurs are a Muslim ethnic group. Um, native to and I know my pronunciation is not good, Xinjiang, China, uh, and they have their own culture and language. They face significant repression by the Chinese government persecution. I've recommended a couple of books about this. We've done at least one interview about it. And China is accused of committing crimes against humanity uh, and even genocide against the Uyghur people in Xinjiang. And it is a major geopolitical issue. This is another example of how these right wingers who say, I guess I'll run for president. They really aren't ready for this. It reminds me of the Gary Johnson moment where he was asked, what would you do about Aleppo? And he goes, Aleppo, what's Aleppo? In that category. What would you do if you were elected about Aleppo? about Aleppo. And what is Aleppo? You're kidding. No. Aleppo is in Syria. <laughs> OK, now, fortunately for Gary Johnson, his campaign was also dead on arrival. So the damage done by that moment was was limited, to say the least. Very, very bad. And, um, you know, for all the criticisms of the people running against Joe Biden that I've had, I think if you ask Bobby Kennedy Jr. about the Uyghur people, he's going to have something for you. And if you ask Marianne Williamson 
about uh, the Uyghur people. She is also going to have something for you. It might be, well, we need love. We need love for the Uyghur. I don't know what it would be, but um, she would have something that would make more sense than Francis Suarez. So polling zero and probably not going to go much higher after yesterday's disastrous interview with Hugh Hewitt. And by the way, good for Hugh Hewitt for saying you're kidding, right? You got to know about this. This is something you have to know about. Uh, we'll come back to that. Maybe the funniest line ever uttered by Hugh Hewitt on the radio. There is a prosecutor who is saying the Trump tape is game over. We've heard a lot from Trump about the tape and Trump says the tape's fine. The tape does nothing. It was illegally leaked. We should go after whoever leaked it. And also, I did everything fine. I did everything right. And they indicted me, as Trump likes to say. Well, actual legal professionals <laughs> say that this is a very, very, very bad development for the failed former president, former prosecutor on new Trump tape. Quote, this is game over. This is Andrew Weissman. He says that um, uh, the public should remember that uh, the prosecutors for special counsel Jack Smith have had the tape of Trump discussing the documents before it was publicized, that they've likely interviewed everyone in the room except for Trump himself, and that it would allow prosecutors to have all accounts of what happened while Trump was speaking. This is a critical uh, uh, fact to understand. Trump's new argument is, OK, I shuffled papers around, but I wasn't really showing anybody the classified classified documents I was pretending to be showing. It was bravado. I have stacks of papers on my desk. As Andrew Weissman, former prosecutor, points out, everybody who was in the room has probably already said, oh, I saw what it was. And if indeed it was a plan to attack Iran from General Mark Milley, that's already in evidence. And that's going to be a real problem for Donald Trump. Uh, Weissman goes on to tell Lawrence O'Donnell, quote, so the big picture here, I think for people is this is game over if you were following the facts and the law. Um, again, on the recording, Trump heard discussing classified information about a potential planned attack on Iran. Weissman says Trump isn't charged with dissemination of national defense information, only that he continued to possess it. But that could be proven. And the tape is absolutely clear. That's another really important question. Very often when defendants or their lawyers attempt to try cases in the media first for public opinion benefit, they will make arguments in defense of themselves or their clients that aren't actually related to what you have been charged with. Trump's argument, I didn't really show anybody that particular document is not a defense to what Trump has been charged with. It's sort of like if you say, hey, uh, DUI, we're charging with DUI. And I go, I didn't have any stolen property in the car. I had I, I, everything that was in the car was my own. It was my phone and it was my, you know, whatever. Well, fine, but you're charged with DUI, not with having stolen stuff in the car. And that is essentially what is happen happening here. Uh, Andrew Weissman going on to say, quote, this is a question now of simply will the government get a trial before the general election? Will a jury actually follow the law and the facts? And will the electorate follow the facts and care? That's what this is really about. Uh, absolutely correct. Weissman added that the tape is only one piece of a massive mountain of evidence against Trump. Trump claimed after the tape was publicized that it exonerates him, but it appears to show him recognizing how the classification process works and that he was continuing to hold on to uh, national defense information. I will say we've heard these announcements of Trump's inevitable demise many times before. And I agree that this is different. We now have multiple arrests, possibly a third and fourth arrest coming. We have a mountain of evidence. We have pictures, Trump's toilet surrounded by documents. It's it's unbelievable stuff. We've never seen anything like this in American history. That being said, I like to err on the side of caution. And so I am not making any premature announcements of Trump's demise. I've learned enough times not to do that. But yes, the tape is really, really really bad. And uh, I can only imagine that there will be some people around Trump actually saying you don't want to go to trial with this. You actually should take a plea deal. Whether anybody's going to be able to convince Donald Trump to do that, that's a different question. And I certainly can't answer at this point that the answer is yes. If you value what we do at The David Pakman Show, remember to support us on Patreon. 
Go to patreon.com slash David Pakman show where you can get access to behind the scenes videos, the daily bonus show, the commercial free daily show, as well as special discounts on merch, including hats, hoodies, mugs and T-shirts. You can support the show for as little as two dollars a month. Check it out at patreon.com slash David Pakman show. All right. This is a really great thing. Howard Stern is a big fan of the David Pakman show. There was like a 10 minute segment on yesterday's Howard Stern show where he basically just sang the praises of the show. And it's just such a great thing. So many of you I know also watch or listen to the Howard Stern show. Many of you know that I've been in Howard's audience since I was like 14. My mom would be driving me to high school and I'd listen to the seven minutes of the show that I could uh, in the car on the way. And I have always been wondering, would there be anything that I could do on the show that would get me on the radar of the Howard Stern show? And I didn't really do anything other than just doing the show. And it turns out Howard is a fan. Check this out. This is very cool. But I will tell you, there is something not so cool in this, which we're going to get to in a moment. But check this out. So many of you writing to me yesterday about it. You ever watch this guy on the uh, Internet? His name is uh, David Pakman. You ever see him? No, I've heard that name though. What is what is well, he all I don't, about? I, I, I don't know. I, I have a YouTube uh, subscription, so I just watch different things on YouTube. And this, he's, he seems like he's a kid. I don't know how old he is. I, I love that. I mean that that I that is maybe the best part of the entire thing. I love that. Uh, I seem like a kid. But he looks like a kid lately to me. But. He's like a young guy and he, he talks politics. Yeah. He's like a oh. commentator on and he's really good. And I'm just wondering who he is and what he's done. I, I end up watching everything he does. Folks, folks, I think you can subscribe to his channel. Absolutely. Which I don't do like I don't oh. pay for it. I get the free feed. You and, oh, you got to be kidding me, Howard. He oh, seems, do you give him a like or anything? Do you do anything? No, for no him? I don't give anybody any likes. Oh. I don't like anything, but I do like the guy. Just not giving a like. Uh, that's so dumb. To like, give me likes. We need those likes, though. Please. I have friends who are really into likes. Like, how come you didn't like my this or that? And I go, well, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I like it, but I don't have to tell the world I like it. This is this is very very good stuff. Like, this is really a great great thing for the show. And I'll tell you, there are some really big people that listen to the Howard Stern show every day. And I've heard from some of them over the last 24 hours. This is really a big deal for the show. I end up putting on YouTube and I watch different clips either about mm -hmm. chess or but this guy, David Pacman shows up. And he's like a commentator, like you'd see hey, they should really hire him on MSNBC. MSNBC doesn't want me. Now, that's a whole other story. Like every single one of these little cl clips could be a whole conversation. I've been on Fox News. I've been on CNN. I've been on Sirius Satellite Radio. I've been yeah, I have never been on MSNBC. MSNBC doesn't want me. They're not interested in what I have to offer. That's very, very clear. Oh, David yeah. Pacman's 39 years old. Oh, he looks like he's 15 to me. I'll take it. I thought he, he was like, looks a young... like a 15 year old and he's 39 to you. I thought he was like wow. a um, I thought he was like a uh, like a high school student or something who's particularly <laughs> bright. If, if I was doing what I was doing as a high school student, it would be an unbelievable thing. I would love that. I would love to go back and do it as a high school student. <laughs> so now he's a 40 year old guy. He's just, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, he's like everybody else. On no, but he's very good. I, I mean, uh, by the way, he's not paying for this uh, mention. I just I just was wondering if you watched him. I was thinking about him. You, the guys just told me he has one point seven million subscribers on YouTube. Really should be two million. So, well, good. that's nice. I'm sure yeah. he can make a living doing that. True. Yeah, no, it's not bad. Uh, let's just look at a couple other. It, this I can't tell everybody how much I enjoyed listening to this yesterday. We were every the, the, we were just all listening to this. Well, I don't know. You know, the, it seems to me the part that I see is free, and then it says, "Well, if you want to be a paid subscriber and like hear the rest of his content, you could pay." And I'm like, "Yes, well, I just like the free content. Oh. I don't need." Well, he's got 1.7 million of those yeah. subscribers. Yeah, but I think they're like me. They're cheapskates who won't pay for content. <laughs> Sadly, 99.3%. I don't want to say cheapskates. They're just they're not paying. That's Howard is not wrong. <laughs>
Yeah, a David Pac-Man membership costs six bucks a month. I'm not I'm not getting started with that. I don't even know how to get, send it. them six bucks. You Damn. know what I mean? I don't even like know how to do well, all that. Folks, we're failing. Through so. your YouTube subscription, you've got, yeah. you know, you filled out everything there. Mm. You can buy it in app, you know? Oh, no. It's all right. I don't want it. <laughs> I get, I Damn like, it. He doesn't want the bonus show, folks. Oh, the bonus show where you want to make money. But everybody else that makes money to fund themselves is bad. The free version. <laughs> But anyway, you'll, uh, take a, him a, you'll take a little of him. You don't need a lot. Yeah, I don't have to get <laughs> I, you know, I got enough of him. <laughs> but he's very good, and he like he sits there and he talks about politics. True. I Simple. generally agree with everything he's saying. Why do you, folks? That is big. Care because I mean, you already think what he thinks. Well, I love the way he articulates it. Thank you. This is, this is, I can't think of anything better than this. There's just a couple, I hope people are enjoying this. There's just a couple more of these. Okay, so why do I watch David Pacman or Rachel Maddow or something? I like to find people who I still feel like they have a grip on reality. Oh, you right? need a group to, to yeah. shore yes. you up. Okay. Yes. It makes me feel better. Because Community, this is what I'm talking about that we need on the left. Because I'm sitting at home thinking maybe I'm out of my mind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, th this is way worse than whatever they were accusing Hillary of doing with her emails. True. And yet nobody seems to be upset about it. Right. It's so. So anyway, th I'm not here even to I'm, I'm sick of uh, sitting and talking about Trump and this and that and the other thing. But I just that's I like this guy. That's all my point is. He seems okay. to be very articulate. You need to be uh, validated. Yeah. And I think if you disagree with me and everything I just said, watch this guy, Pac-Man. He's good. Pac-Man. He's Pac-Man. Incredible. Incre I mean, that's how can you say it's Pac-Man? That is why I watch people who think like me. Okay. And David Pac-Man thinks like me. And I, I, I was just curious who this guy is and where he comes from because I, I, I'm an admirer of his broadcast. Incredible. Well, now you and know he's been around a while. Then maybe you can look up his background. He's not still in high school. Right. He probably went to college. True. <laughs> you can look him up. Robin that really inferring a lot of important stuff. I listened to David Pakman because I found this guy on YouTube who is has a very easy way of describing what is going on. Thank you. And you watch it and it makes a lot of sense. He's not he's dealing in facts. And I like him. That's all. I don't know who the guy is. I don't know where he came from. I don't. Well, I'm glad to explain it all. And lastly, here's a funny thing. A guy calls in to say, what about Brian Tyler Cohen? And Howard's like, yeah, I don't know about that. But, and by the way, we love Brian. We, I was texting with Brian yesterday. And, and at first, when people wrote to me and said, he's talking about both of you guys, I wrote to Brian and I said, hey, apparently Howard's talking about both of us. Then I heard it. And this was the, the mention of Brian. We were laughing about it. Uh, Jerry, you're on the air in Maryland. Howard, Howard, how are you doing? I've been listening to you since uh, DC 101, way back when. Uh, nice. And I feel your pain about uh, about Trump and everything. And I, I, I didn't call you for this reason, but if you're into uh, Pac-Man, there's also Brian Tyler Cohen, very similar guy. He's got a show also on YouTube. He has a couple million viewers too. Or, or yeah, there's or. another guy I do watch. I don't, but but Pac-Man, I like the best out yeah, of Yeah, I like Pac-Man too. Very intelligent. And he, yeah. Who is that shaves, guy? Who is Pac-Man? By the way, who, anyway, who is this Howard? Kid? All right. So anyway, we reached out and we said, if Howard wants to know the oranges story of Pac-Man, I'm glad to be on. This is fantastic. So th this is just a great thing. It's a great thing for the show. It, you know, whatever you think about Howard Stern as an interviewer, absolutely top notch, essentially created the medium and format that allows shows like mine to exist. I know a lot of people talk about Rush Limbaugh did this and that and the other thing. No, 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 no. Uh, really the sort of like community conversational uh, format that I believe all of these shows are based on. And the idea that it is something people would engage with, I think Howard Stern is single handedly responsible for creating that. So this is a great thing. And in all seriousness, by the way, you know, I know we're joking around about Howard won't pay for the bonus show. A David Pacman membership costs six bucks a month. There you go. In all seriousness, it's emblematic of what we're up against. What Howard did yesterday is worth much more than six bucks a month to the show. But nearly billionaire Howard Stern loves the content uh, among all the things that he could watch, among everything he has to do. He could be hanging out with Billy Joel, right? Uh, and he's watching the David Pakman show. 
and he won't get a membership. So it's not a criticism of Howard, but this is the uphill battle we're up against. On the right, some right wing rich dude stumbles across Ben Shapiro one time, sends five million bucks and says, use this money to run Facebook ads. And then they do it and then they grow. The right has that. The left is different. So at a minimum, OK, when Howard Stern says, I love the content, but I won't subscribe for six bucks, the minimum you can do is hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Help us get to that two million. And if you can, in all seriousness, go to joinpacman.com, get yourself a membership. You can use the coupon code indicted again. And uh, what what a day, what a day. All right. Before we move on to voicemails and other things, I do want to just close the loop on this arc that we've looked at today. The leaked Trump audio recording, Trump telling semaphore. I didn't actually have documents I was referring to. Alina Habba, Trump's lawyer, saying in an interview, we don't even really know anything about anything ever. Uh, Donald Trump imploding in an all capital letters rant on truth social, truth central, where he said, quote, if I wasn't running for president or if I was losing badly in the polls, I am winning by record numbers and against Biden also, I would never have been fake indicted. Of course, the indictments are very real. Likewise, if the very corrupt Democrats truly wanted to run against me, I wouldn't have been indicted. It is all a badge of honor and courage. I am being indicted for you. Nothing in that screed makes any sense whatsoever. The indictment is real. It has nothing to do with corrupt Democrats. It has nothing to do with Joe Biden. It has nothing to do with Trump's polling whatsoever. Trump continuing, please remember that the only reason I was indicted election interference is because the Democrats don't want to run against me. Actually, they do. You're polling worse than DeSantis. Why wouldn't they want to run against you? They weaponize the DOJ and FBI. I am beating crooked Joe Biden in virtually every poll. That is untrue. DeSantis is beating him, but you're not and easily beat him in the last election. But the election was rigged. This is untrue. Joe Biden won in 2016. It was the same thing spewed from the mouths of the same failed pundits and losers. They said I couldn't beat Hillary. How did that work out? Doug Schoen of Fox News should get a new playbook. And then lastly, talking about his visit in uh, in New Hampshire, three people in New Hampshire asked me why Fox News uses such horrible pictures of me when doing or promoting a story. I'm sure they were crying, right? The coloring distortions, everything are just so bad. They must sit and look at 100 different shots and then take the 10 absolute worst. My staff has even complained about it for months, but to no avail. Folks, this is the guy who criticizes others for being snowflakes and triggered, who doesn't like the pictures they're using of him on Fox. Fox is just bad news, he goes on to say, but I'm leading in the polls by record numbers. So perhaps their bull is just not working. They are down 37 percent for a reason. Trump is crumbling. There's no other way to say it. Trump is crumbling. He doesn't know what argument to make at this point in time. None of the arguments are working. They're all lies. They don't make sense. They're not legal arguments. We can only hope. And remember, this isn't me going. We can only hope he gets life in prison. We can only hope that justice transpires. That's called law and order. We have a voicemail number. That number is two one nine two David P. People are calling in because of the story I told on the bonus show about my flight back from San Francisco. And people are criticizing me, even though I was the victim of pricks on my flight. Take a listen. David, it's Alan from Jersey. And I was listening to the bonus show yeah. yesterday and you were telling another story of your airline travel. Yeah. And all these airline travel stories you tell are exactly the same. I've told like two stories. You're the only one that knows the procedure to get to your seat. You're the only one that knows the right time to put the window shade up, the right time to put the window shade down, the proper procedure to get your bag in the overhead bin. You're the only <laughs> one that knows how to do the roller bag and the personal item. And uh -huh. Everybody else is doing it wrong, David. You're the only one, or perhaps, David, in these situations, in these situations, you should step back and say, am I the only one that knows how to put the bags in the overhead bin? Am I the only one? Or perhaps everybody else is doing it the right way and you're doing it the wrong way, yeah. David. I'm the problem, clearly. Think about this, David, because it can't be that everybody else is always wrong and doing it the wrong way. All right, listen, dude, I told one story in 2021 
on a Lufthansa flight from Frankfurt to JFK, in which I explained that there was a particular guy. OK, this was a 747 out of 400 people. There was one guy who yelled at me because I used an overhead bin. OK, all the other 399 people on the flight did the right thing. It's not everybody's doing it wrong and I'm doing it right. I then have had 10 flights since then where nobody's done anything wrong. And last week on my flight back from San Francisco, one guy jumped ahead of me, pushed his way past me to cram his bag into the obvious spot where I was about to lift my bag. The, uh, that, there were 180 people on that flight, 179 of them, including my daughter, all behaved perfectly. It's not everybody's doing everything wrong. Get, get out of here. Give me a break, dude. OK, we've got a great bonus show for you today. The Supreme Court is putting some First Amendment limits on laws that ban online threats. Why? What are those limits? We're going to discuss it. There is a Delaware city that is going to give corporations the right to vote in elections. What? Yes. And lastly, a Republican senator is challenging a union leader to a mixed martial arts fight. At least it's for charity. All of it we are going to talk about on the bonus show. A David Pacman membership costs six bucks a month. True, but with a discount code, it's only two. You can use the discount code indicted again, and we will have such a great bonus show for you today. Uh, we will see you then. Otherwise, I will be back here tomorrow if I have anything. Say about it. Thanks a lot for watching today's show. I just want to take a second to tell you about today's sponsors. It's springtime, you're outside more, it is time for sunscreen. But stay away from the chemical sunscreens with ingredients that can irritate skin, cause hormonal disruption, or worse. Instead, use mineral sunscreen by Ginger Armor which is just as effective. You'll get 15 percent off with code Pacman at gingerarmor.com. The link is down below.